My name is Daniela Blechmar, and I am an assistant professor of art history and Spanish and Portuguese at the University of Southern California. My research explores the connections between images, the history of science, and the history of colonialism, particularly the Spanish Empire between roughly 1500 and 1800. The book that I'm working on looks at the intersection between visual culture and colonial botany in the Spanish Empire in the late 18th century. This is a project that tries to think of images as documents, not for their aesthetic value, but for the information that they contain and for the work that they did for the people who were producing and using them. It is a story about the production and circulation of knowledge and the role of visual epistemology in this process. I'm working with images that were produced by artists and scientists working together, traveling through South America and Mexico and the Philippines as well, trying to record the flora and sending back to Spain drawings, seeds, press plants, and textual descriptions. This kind of image has normally been considered purely decorative. But what I argue is that we need to take seriously the epistemological value of these images. These images are scientific information. What looks at first like an image of a plant is actually a recording of the plant and also of the observations that were conducted. This portrait depicts one of the most important botanists working in the Americas towards the end of the 18th century. His name was José Celestino Mutis, and he was a doctor born in Spain who traveled to the Viceroyalty of New Granada, what is now Colombia, and he settled in Bogotá, and he spent about 40 years studying the flora of that region and working with a very large team of local naturalists and artists. This portrait depicts him as a scientist at work. And what we can see is that he is inside an enclosed space. He's not out in the fields, but inside his study. So not exactly the picture we have of an explorer. He's sitting at his desk and he is observing with minute, careful attention a flower, and he has a magnifying glass. The portrait's emphasis on the role of observation demonstrates that for 18th century scientists, looking was one of the most important things they could do. And so, in order to become a scientist, one needed to learn how to look in very specific ways. This engraving comes from a book published in 1751 by one of the most important botanists anywhere of the 18th century, Carl Linnaeus, uh, the founder of the binomial nomenclature system. Linnaeus' work served to train naturalists far and wide. The importance of print for this story cannot be exaggerated. Through print, botanists, whether they were in Sweden, where Linnaeus lived, or in Madrid, or in Paris, or in London, or in the New World, if they had a book, they could look at the images in that book and learn how to look like a naturalist. And so what this image is showing you is just how meticulous and how difficult scientific looking was in the 18th century. This plate depicts 62 types of plant leaves. And as you can imagine, there's a list of 62 names, one of them that goes with each leaf. So in order to become a botanist, one had to learn how to look at a plant and immediately refer to this mental image in a visual repertory that was internalized and be able to tell what type of leaf does this plant have. And there were plates not only for leaves, but for every single part of the plant, so that through this training, this back and forth between text and image, botanists could learn how to look in very specific ways. And this helps us make sense of why Mutis is so interested in looking in his portrait. Images were very important to the training of naturalists in order for them to learn how to see like 
a scientist. They were also very important for incarnating their observations so that they were recording not just what plants look like, but what they look like to specifically trained eyes. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, images were very, very useful for making this information travel. So that if we think about what happens when a plant was pressed and sent from Bogota, Colombia, back to Spain, the result was not so impressive. But an image could do much more work and preserve information that would otherwise be lost. So that through this triangulation of materials, through using written descriptions, drawings, and press specimens, these three elements could be combined later on by naturalists in Europe to produce textual and visual descriptions that then would be published and in this way circulate. So that images were helping information travel. This painting, produced in Colombia around 1800, shows Spanish botanist Antonio José Cabanillas. Cabanillas was a very important scientist at the time. He was a director of the Madrid Botanical Garden. And this image shows us the use that was intended for the illustrations produced by the expeditions. This painting shows Cabanillas in a closed room sitting before his desk using a drawing that looks like one of the images from the expedition to compose a botanical description of a plant. So with one hand he points at the image that he's using as his source and with other he writes down what he sees. So again he's conducting observations but rather than having to travel to the Americas. The Americas have traveled to him through this illustration, pairing these two portraits, looking at them side by side, helps us understand the cyclical nature of this project and the centrality of both observation and representation to the production of scientific knowledge.